thank you all for being here today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The only announcement I'd like to make today is that next week on Sunday, October 4th, we'll be having the three-month requiem uh, for our beloved uh, Father Peter. It'll be exactly three months to the day of his falling asleep in the Lord on July 4th, and that will be October 4th. So we invite you to join us. We'll have his, his requiem right after liturgy. I would like to talk about one of the saints today who wasn't the major saint of the day, but a very, very wonderful saint, very dear to my heart. He's well known to Romanians and to Georgians, but not known very well outside of that, except by Orthodox Christians in Lebanon and Syria who know their history. He was Georgian. His name was Saint Anthemus the Iberian. You're thinking Iberia, you're thinking of Spain and Portugal, those of you who think in terms of Western Europe. But Iberia was also the name for the Caucasus region between the Black Sea and the, and the Caspian Sea. And this kingdom of Georgia was known as Iberia in Byzantine times in the Middle Ages in Eastern Europe. Even on Mount Athos today, one of the 20 ruling monasteries is the Iveron Monastery, named for the Georgians who came from the Republic of Georgia. It was a monastery that was entirely filled with Georgians, as was a huge monastery in Jerusalem by the old city called the Monastery to the Holy Cross. Beautiful, the most beautiful mosaics in the Holy Land are there, dating from the 11th century. So this Saint Anthim, known in Romania as Anthim Iverianu, Anthim the Georgian, was a theologian, a scholar, a calligrapher, a philosopher, and one of the greatest ecclesiastical figures in Wallachia, which was the name of Romania back in late medieval and early modern times. Because throughout the Balkan Peninsula, there were people called Vlachs who spoke Romanian or a late version of Latin. They're the remnants of the Roman legions who were on the Danube at the time of the Slavic invasions of the 6th century. So the land of the Vlachs is Wallachia. He lived between 1650 and 1716. Dark times for Orthodox Christians in the Balkans and even in Georgia, because the Ottoman Empire was at its height. The Ottoman Empire included the whole of the Balkans, right up Asia Minor up to the borders of Georgia, all of the Middle East, all of North Africa, all the way to Morocco. Even Mecca was in the Ottoman Empire. It was a massive empire, bigger than anything in Europe. And he was born in these days, in 1650. In the Georgian kingdom known as Iberia and was baptized with the name Andre or Andrew, Andrea. He was taken prisoner by Ottoman soldiers, Turkish troops, and sold in the slave market in Constantinople. But God was with him and he was purchased by the patriarch when he saw the Christian slaves. And there in Istanbul, he lived in the compounds of what was known as the Fanar, the lighthouse. It was the Greek Orthodox quarter of Constantinople, Istanbul. When we speak of Fanariats, we're talking about the Greeks who lived in Istanbul, and that was their quarter of the city. This is a time when there were still a million or more Greek Orthodox living in Istanbul right up until 1918. He trained there as an artisan. 
He learned the art of wood carving, painting, embroidery, and calligraphy. Patriarch Dositheus of Jerusalem traveled to Yash in Moldavia, which is the northeastern part of modern day Romania. And he took Andre with him. A Greek printing office had already been established in 1682. And in 1689, he was asked to settle in Wallachia by Prince Constantine Brinkovianu, who himself is a saint, who as we hear was martyred with his four sons in a few years from this point. He heard of Andre's talents and asked him to stay in Wallachia to help him with his projects with printing. After a year or so, he became a monk and was given the name Antim, Anthimos. And later, he was ordained to the holy priesthood. He soon acquired a thorough knowledge of Romanian, of older Romanian, and was instrumental in helping to introduce that language into the local church as its official language. At this time, the Romanians were using a Cyrillic alphabet based on Church Slavonic, but there was also a huge influence by Greeks who were imposing a Greek liturgy. They had Slavic liturgies and Greek liturgies but very few Romanian liturgies. In 1691, he was given charge of the newly founded printing press in Bucharest, the capital of modern day Romania, and set up a printing house in the Snagov Monastery to the south of it. The monastery printed 63 books, many of which were liturgical in Romanian, in Greek, in Arabic, and Georgian. Because while he was in Constantinople, he was very gifted with languages and even learned Greek and Arabic. Saint Anthimos himself was the author of 38 of these books. And for many of these books, he carved the letters for the printing press because of his skills as a woodcarver. In 1693, he published the Gospels in Romanian in the vernacular language for the people to understand. In 1696, he was appointed abbot or igumen of the Snagov Monastery, and he became Bishop of Rimnik in 1705. And in 1708, Antim, who was Georgian by birth, became the Metropolit, the Metropolitan, of all Wallachia. In 1709, as I said, he also did not forget his homeland. And he was a founder of the first Georgian printing press, the first printing press in the kingdom of Georgia, in Tbilisi in his capital. He trained Georgians in the art of printing and again, he even carved the letters for the printing press with his own hand. And they printed the first book of, first book of gospels in the Georgian language. He also printed a short catechism to assist his priests in giving catechetical instruction in addition, he published 25 other books in Romanian, as well as Church Slavonic, Greek, and Arabic. He published books that were bilingual with Greek and Arabic on facing pages, badly needed by the Arabic Christians 
in Lebanon and Syria and throughout the Ottoman Empire. Even though he was Georgian, <coughs> working in Wallachia. He was the first in Wallachia to use Arabic fonts, which again he carved himself. The most important work by Metropolitan Atimos was a book called the Didakile, or the Teachings. The book consists of 28 sermons he delivered throughout his priestly service on the occasions of great feasts of the church, as well as various feasts of the Mother of God and the saints, including seven homilies for special occasions. St. Anthem established free schools for poor children and directed a building program of more than 20 churches and monasteries in Wallachia. And because he was a wood carver, he used his talent to beautify many of those churches. He founded All Saints Monastery in the heart of Bucharest, today known as Anti Monastery, in his memory. The main gates of the monastery were designed by Anthimos himself using Georgian motifs. As Metropolitan, he established rules for the monastery. He declared its independence from the Church of Constantinople, who was already trying to control it from Istanbul because they had the ear of the Sultan. From the day of his consecration, Metropolitan Antim fought for the liberation of Wallachia from foreign, particularly Turkish, rule and the influence of the Fanar in Istanbul. Antim's overt opposition to Ottoman tutelage over Wallachia made him an adversary of the Fanariat regime, which is closely allied with the Ottoman authorities. In 1714, after, actually three years after Peter the Great of Russia had a war with Turkey, and Antim, Metvan Antim, and Prince Constantine decided this might be the time to rise up and throw off any form of vassalage to the Ottoman Empire. But the campaign did not go well. So Constantine tried to cover his tracks, gave back the gifts that he had received from the Tsar, and tried to make peace with the Sultan. But he and his four sons and a chancellor were all taken hostage to Istanbul where they would be executed as martyrs by beheading. Today they are canonized as saints and martyrs in the Romanian Orthodox Church. Prince Constantine's successor, Stefan Cantacuzino, was the last prince of Wallachia, was executed in 1716. And then to rule over Wallachia, the Ottoman Empire sent a Greek from the Fanar, Nicholas Mavro Kordatos, who was only interested in pleasing the Ottoman Empire, and he replaced the Wallachian princes. Mavro Kordatos was suspicious of Metropolitan Antim and ordered him to resign. And after Metropolitan Antimos refused to do so, Mavro Kordatos appealed to the Patriarch Jeremiah of Constantinople. So the Patriarch convened a council of bishops without any representation of Romanians, without any representation of Georgians, but just the Greeks of the Fanar. And they anathematized him and excommunicated Metropolitan Antim. Metropolitan Antim was deposed he was arrested and he was blinded in 1716, having been accused of being involved in a plot to end Ottoman control of Wallachia. He was then sentenced to be exiled to St. Catherine's Monastery on Mount Sinai, which 
was within the Ottoman Empire at that time. But he never reached his destination. On September 27th in 1716, he was killed by the soldiers who were escorting him as he was going through what is today Bulgaria. They then cut his body into little pieces and threw them into the Tuncha River south of the Danube near Adrianople. Thus this faithful servant of Christ received the crown of martyrdom. It is alleged that his murder was ordered by Mavro Portitos himself because he was so popular with the people in Wallachia. St. Antin was a true shepherd to his flock and a father to his clergy. It was thanks to his publications and encouragement that Romanian became the liturgical language of the Romanian Orthodox Church. And his books in Arabic were a godsend for the Christians in Lebanon and Syria who had these service books with Greek and Arabic on facing pages, their vernacular. So here it is that this excommunicated, anathematized, that means put under a curse by the Senate in Constantinople and the Patriarch himself ends up becoming a saint. Only in 1966 did the ecumenical patriarchates annul their defrockment unjustly issued against St. Antim. And in June 21st, 1992, the Holy Synod of the Romanian Orthodox Church canonized Metropolitan Antim as a saint, a holy hierarchy martyr to be celebrated in Romania on September 14th. Later, the Church of Georgia also recognized its son and his work and canonized him, and they commemorate him on June 13th. In September of 2016, the 300th anniversary of Metropolitan Antim's martyrdom, 27 hierarchs, 27 bishops, patriarchs, metropolitans, gathered in Romania to commemorate him in a divine liturgy. These included his beatitude, John the 10th Patriarch of Antioch in Lebanon and Syria, who presided. His beatitude, Daniel, Patriarch of Romania, and Metropolitan John of Rustavi, representative of the Patriarch of Georgia. At that commemoration, Patriarch John of Antioch addressed the faithful, referring to Hiram Martyr St. Antim the Georgian as an icon of love, beneath which the Orthodox peoples of the churches of Romania, Antioch, meaning Syria and Lebanon and Iraq, and Georgia have gathered. Metropolitan John of Rustavi from his native Georgia read out the message of his beatitude, Edia II, Catholicos Patriarch of Georgia, who pointed out that on the one hand, St. Antim the Iberian led a selfless struggle for the national identity of Romanians. But on the other hand, he demonstrated that a true neighbor in the Orthodox Church does not parade his nationality, but his ministry to God prevails over all. And that's why he was also publishing in Georgian, Church Slavonic, and even Arabic and Greek. Patriarch of Georgia said the humbleness of the Romanians, their love for God and their goodness strengthened St. Antim to generously give out love throughout the 26 years of his ministry to build dozens of churches, work in various fields of art, to be a philosopher, a theologian, an interpreter, a translator, and an organizer of publishing work in Romania, who made 
this country the center of international publishing at the time. The commemorative central decree of the Romanian Orthodox Church on that 300th anniversary of the martyrdom of St. Antim, the Iberian Metropolitan of Wallachia, was then read. To honor the memory of St. Antim the Iberian is a duty of conscience for the entire Romanian people, for his contribution to the development of printing and of the Romanian liturgical language. The example of St. Antim the Iberian who dedicated his life to Christ the Lord, even to a martyr's death, and his prayers sent up before the throne of the Most Holy Trinity, are a source of inspiration and renewal for the life of our faithful, but also for the strengthening of fraternal communion among our churches, around the saints who defended orthodoxy in the most difficult of times in many lands. I suppose the reason why he's so dear to my heart is because it's so very like our monastery. Here in America, when I was very young, when I first became Orthodox, it was very hard to find English-speaking parishes. There are many now. They used to call them pan-Orthodox parishes, where you had people from many ethnicities, but they all prayed in English. But St. Antim was for all Orthodox Christians. They were all his brothers. And yet he was a champion of Romanian nationality. He did both, very like we do here. Here in America, where you have a pan-Orthodox parish, it's very often 100% English. We use a lot of English because it's a common language. But we also mix in a lot of other languages to make other people feel welcome and to know that we honor their heritage. And it's all beautiful before God because there's only one Orthodox church even though there are many manifestations of it, not only as individuals, but as nationalities. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please come for the Holy Bread with your right hand cupped over your left, and they will drop it into your hands with tongs. 